what I'm going to present to you is a detailed outline of a modified, improved version of the consolidation program listed in Heavy Duty 2, Mind and Body, my latest book. From one perspective, at least, it might be said that this is a perfect bodybuilding program if you keep in mind, at least, that the ideal situation is to be able to stimulate all of the major muscles of the body with the least amount of exercise possible. We'll go through this quickly without unduly hurrying it. What I would suggest you consider trying at least for part of the year, of course you're not morally, legally bound to do this all year around, but as I tell my training clients, having hired me as your trainer, it's my job to get you growing stronger and bigger in the fastest way possible. And I have found through considerable experience that this, this program literally does represent, again, from a certain perspective, throughout part of the training year, a perfect program. I would suggest you start my training once a week, doing two different basic workouts. We'll refer to them here as workout A and workout B. Now, a lot of people like conveniently to work out on weekends. So what you would do is on the first weekend, do workout A. Seven days later, do workout B. Workout A will consist of number one, a set of squats, preferably on a machine. If not the Nautilus Duo squat, then perhaps a Smith machine. If you have any problems with your back or you can't do squats for whatever reason, then I, su I would suggest you substitute leg presses. Do one set of squats to fail your 8 to 15 reps. Now, that's just a guide figure, by the way, 8 to 15. Uh, I don't know that there is a perfect rep range, but you got to start somewhere. You have to do something. 8 to 15 has proven empirically through observation to work quite well for the legs. After a brief rest, and by a brief rest, I mean go get a drink of water, walk around for a few seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, depending upon your existing condition, but rest as little as possible. As soon as you recognize you're ready to go, proceed to a set of close grip palms up pull downs. Close grip palms up pull downs. And by that, I mean your grip should be eight or 10 inches apart, depending upon your shoulder width and your physical stature. Palms up, I need a, a curling grip. Your palms are literally facing up. Initiate the movement with extreme deliberation, utilizing no thrust or momentum to get the way started and to keep it moving. Pull it down to your clavicles under hyper strict control. Pause for a long static count of two or three seconds and lower under strict control. That's all you're going to do, a set of squats, 8 to 15 to failure, followed by a very brief rest, and a set of close grip, palms up, pull down, 6 to 10 reps to failure. That's all you're going to do. Two sets, two exercises, one set of each. One week later, you'll do workout B, which will consist of, number one, a set of regular, not stiff-legged, but the regular old-fashioned deadlift, or as many of you here seem to enjoy, you might want to use the trap bar. That's fine with five to eight reps to failure. After a brief rest, proceed to exercise number two, a set of dips, six to 10 reps to failure. Now, Let's return to the why. Why is this program that I'm, I just gave you, from one perspective again, perfect? Well, let's look at the pull-downs. While most people think of them exclusively as a lat exercise, and they are very good for the lats, they are also very effective in working the rear delt. And it just so happens to be true, audience, the close grip palms up pull-down is the best bicep exercise in the world better than any curl you could do. Here's why. <clears throat> when you do a curl, whether it's a barbell curl, a nautilus curl, a dumbbell curl, whatever, you're working this muscle around a single joint axis, the elbow, which is why the stress is limited exclusively to the lower bicep, if you've noticed. When doing a close grip palms up pull down, on the other hand, you're working the bicep around the joint, the elbow joint, and the shoulder 
the muscle is contracting more uniformly from both ends. And the dips. Again, I said think of the dips as the upper body squat. Dips are by far, without a doubt, they're unparalleled. They are the best exercise for pecs, delts, and triceps. Did any of you happen to catch the or watch the Olympics from Atlanta a couple summers ago on sports? There were three Americans who worked the parallel bars, you may recall, three American gymnasts who worked the parallel bars that possessed pecs, shoulders, and arms like those of an advanced bodybuilder, literally. Not just, you know, kind of beginning bodybuilders, but advanced bodybuilders. One of my recent phone clients happens to be deeply involved in the world of gymnastics, and he knows those three guys. He told me that people ask them all, all the time if they lift weights, and they don't. They develop those big upper bodies doing dips. And then just last Sunday, I happened to tune in literally by accident to ABC Wide World of Sports at a gymnastics competition. At one point, they did a close-up of Ivan Ivanko. Have you ever heard of him? Incredibly heavily muscled guy. As he was chalk, he was putting chalk on his hands for the in preparation for the overhead horizontal bar where you do chin-ups mostly, as he supinated the palm of his right hand to put on the chalk, his bicep isolated and popped out. It looked as big and even more defined as most advanced, even professional bodybuilders. The point here is that this program will stimulate strength and size increases in all of your major muscles. My suggestion is that you do this workout regimen for at least six months in order to maximize your body's anabolic process. Yes, I know there's a thousand exercises you could do, but you got to draw the line somewhere at the least amount possible. A few final points on the program. Don't make the mistake of gauging or evaluating the success, the success of any one of these workouts based on pump or soreness. If getting a pump was clear proof that growth was stimulated, then all these people I see training volume style for hours, even two and three times a day, would have 32-inch arms by now because they get pumped every day, twice and thrice a day for years. Getting a pump is not important. It feels good. I like it myself, but it's not important. The main point here is, and this is an important point, you won't know that any one of these workouts was a successful workout until the next time you do that workout. If you're stronger, obviously a positive change took place. And the point there is keep a training journal. Record the date of each workout. You list your body weight at the beginning. List the exercises, the amount of weight, of course. And be real cautious and careful about this last point. Accurately record, record the number, number of reps. Thank you.